Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lucy Beckham Baseball, coming to you from Cane Bay High School in the Monk's Corner, Somerville area. Round two of Lucy Beckham versus Cane Bay Baseball is taking place tonight. As Monday night had game number one, it was a 14-4 victory for the Lucy Beckham Bengals at the home field. Tonight they're on the road taking on the Cobras. And they're doing so up at Cobra Park in this relatively new Cane Bay High School and really the whole Cane Bay area of Berkeley County. As you see, we have the meeting at the plate going right now. Head coaches agreeing on ground rules and pointing out some of the nuances of this territory. Early on, we'll bring up the fact that we are broadcasting from the most unfortunate of locations directly behind home plate. So there will be less commentary about balls and strikes tonight as a courtesy to the home plate umpire, although you know what we're thinking. It is, it is the few days after the Masters, so maybe there's a little Vern Lundquist in here just to be a good measure. Lots of activity here tonight at Cane Bay High School. There's a track meet. Looked like there were a few sports practices as well. James Island has a, I believe, JV game going behind us. Maybe a B team. But I'm pretty sure that's a JV game behind us. As Cane Bay takes advantage of its large and well spread out sports complex. There is a lot of parking, but not much tonight. It's uh, find it if you can, and you have to know which entrance you're coming to. If you happen to be on your way to the game, don't go to where Waze or Google Maps tells you to go on the main road. Go down the side on, I think it's Cane Bay Boulevard, and go to the second entrance on the right there. You'll find the baseball fields back there. If you're at the heavily crowded football field parking lot, you're not in the right place. You'll be like me, you will park twice tonight. The chain link fence backstop and the crossbars that are part of it make it very unfortunate and very difficult to try to find a good place to take video from. No matter where you go, either you have a vertical interfering with home plate or you have a horizontal crossbar interfering with the first base line or as we have tonight we're sitting behind home plate and standing for most of the game to broadcast this to you It feels like we're in prime Nat country out here. It appears that Cane Bay is going to take the field tonight without having player introductions. Not sure exactly how this is going to work, so we'll give you a lineup in just a second. For Cane Bay, the home team lineup. Leading off number 12, shortstop Julian Minus, followed by number three, designated hitter Ethan Dodson. Batting third, number 16, first baseman Devin Hogue. Batting fourth, number 23, 
Right fielder Anthony Alvarez batting fifth, catcher number five, Connor Hirsch batting sixth, number eight, Carson Newberry, who plays center field. Batting seventh, second baseman number 24, Mitchell Bennett. Batting eighth, number nine, catcher Ryan Brewington. And batting ninth, number 10, left fielder Chandler Berry. Ethan Dodson, the DH, is batting tonight for number 14, Lucas Porcelli, the starting pitcher who's out there on the hill right now getting warmed up. That's the Cane Bay Cobras lineup. They'll be facing Lucy Beckham's best, leading off number one, excuse me, <laughs> leading off number two, shortstop pairing catching. Batting second, center fielder number 11, Kevin Fagan, batting third, Catcher number nine, Hank Epley. In the cleanup spot, number 12, first baseman Riles Morris back in the lineup at full strength. Batting fifth, right fielder number six, Kingston Cold. Batting sixth, designated hitter and starting pitcher number eight, Preston DiNapoli. Batting seventh, number three, second baseman Tommy Byrne. Batting eighth, third baseman number five, Andrew Hoover. And batting ninth, left fielder number 10, Holman Blake. We'll start things off without a national anthem or without player introductions. Pairing catching comes to the plate. And here's the first pitch. Strike one is recorded at 7.01 p.m. here in Monk's Corner. Lucas Porcelli sends one in. Perrin Ketchin's going to have a base hit to lead things off here tonight. And it's a line drive out to right. Now here's Kevin Fagan. Fagan comes into the game tonight. A newly committed man. If you didn't watch Monday night's game, or if you tuned out early, at the end of that game we had Kevin up in the booth with us for a few minutes talking about his recent commitment to USC Sumter. He's going to be a baseball fire ant, and tonight he's starting things off showing bunt. Fagan takes the strike, there's a throw down to first. Trying to keep catching on us down there, and he's back to the bag safely. Porcelli, a left-handed pitcher, looks over to first base. He's a modest lead out of pair and catching. Now he's going to come to the plate, and it's going to be knocked foul down the third base line. Third pitch of the at-bat. Just a little bit high, and now it's a ball and two strikes. Another ball fouled back, this time over toward the junior varsity field behind us. Now again the one-two count and instead Porcelli takes it over to first base with another pickoff attempt. Porcelli comes set, runner takes off for second. He's gonna step off, down to, first, down to the slide. The throw is a little bit high and gets away from second baseman number 24, Caden Haught. And Perrin Ketchin is in safely with a stolen base. That is, I believe, stolen base number 16 for the team leader in thefts. And a little dance to celebrate out there at the base. So now Kevin Fagan with a 1-2 count has a runner in scoring position here early in the first. No score and nobody out.
There's a shot down the left side. It's going to be in left field on the ground. It'll leave runners at the corners as the throw comes into the plate. Fagan decides to take an extra base as the throw comes all the way into home. And nobody keeping him honest out there, so runners at second and third for Hank Epley. Two on, nobody out. Top of the first inning, no score here as Beckham takes on the Cobras of Cane Bay High School. A lot of noise, a lot of chirping coming out of the first base dugout. That's where your Beckham Bengals are camped out. And Porcelli is in with strike number one to the Beckham catcher. Outside pitch, fouled back here. And Riles Morris takes care of the janitorial duties. Ball is put back in play. Epley is in the box, 0-2 count. Porcelli from the stretch delivers low, and it's a ball and two strikes. Epley swinging the ALX bat. I believe that's a Louisville Slugger product. Fagan at second. Perrin catching at third. And the Bengals catcher continues to fight baseballs off. Count stays at one and two. <clears throat> Getting a thumbs up over here from Stuart Ketchin. From what? From the general. We all know who the general is. Glad to have you listening tonight, sir. Two and two. This ball is fouled over into the Cane Bay dugout on the third base side, and the count will stay unchanged. This is a shot to right field. This is getting past the right fielder's head. That's gonna be extra bases. Here's one run in. Here's two runs in. Epley round second. He's going to third. It's a stand-up triple for the Bengals catcher. And there it is. There's the dance. Hank Epley with a two-run shot to right. And here the Bengals are up. Two to nothing in the top of the first inning with nobody out and Riles Morris coming to the plate. Beautiful shot. Sounded crisp coming off the bat. Right fielder Anthony Alvarez had to turn and chase it down and it was all the way at the base of the fence by the time he got it. Hank Epley, all gas, no brakes as he rounded second. Never even thought about going for two. That was triple all day long. Riles Morris now at the plate, takes strike number one. Just at the outside edge, didn't like that pitch. He's coming back in now. Riles swinging a borrowed DeMarini Goods. I believe I paid for that bat. Hank Epley trying to challenge Kingston Kolb for batting dominance. These two guys have a friendly battle going on, but man, is it fun to watch. Knocking extra bases, running like the wind. Hank the defending silver slugger. Kingston the upstart challenger this year. Now here's Riles Morris on a 1-2 pitch. 
This is going to bring Hank in. This is a passed ball. Epley stands it. And it's three to nothing. Morris now with the bases empty. Breaking ball started out high. Fell, but not far enough, and now the count runs full. Here's the payoff pitch from Porcelli, and it's going to be a walk as that pitch comes in low. Ryan Brewington, tonight's catcher, was the starting pitcher He was the starting pitcher on Monday. And now here is that upstart challenger. Here's Kingston Kolb. Kingston Kolb, a man who appreciates showmanship, coming to the plate with no walk-up music, no announcement. Takes a little bit of the experience away, so he'll make up for it with the bat, hopefully. One and one count on him now. Kingston playing right field tonight. He's floated between right and left. Usually staying on left when Holman Blake is in to pitch or at least scheduled to relieve. But tonight Holman's out there in left, so Kingston's happy to cover right field. Porcelli tosses over to first, gets nothing there, and now he comes to the plate with it, and it's strike number two. Another check to first, same result. And Kolb steps back into the box, waiting on his one-two pitch. Three to nothing is the score here in the top of the first inning as the Bengals have struck early. Nobody out so far. Porcelli sends ball two in, it's high and away. A smattering of Bengals family and fans here tonight. Late start and a long distance even though it is in town, and Kingston Kolb swings and misses for the first out of the top half of the frame. Now here's tonight's designated hitter and starting pitcher, Preston DiNapoli, who comes up on a mission not only to prove what he can do with the baseball bat, but to give himself a bit of a birthday gift with what's hopefully going to be a win. DiNapoli turning 17 tonight, and the first pitch he takes is wide for ball one. Starter gun keeps firing off to the left over at the football field and running track where they're having their varsity track meet. Just a little distracting every now and then. Just outside the frame on the right side of your viewer, you're missing Vic Major giving what appears to be a yoga class down there, stretching things out, working the back muscles. Not sure if that's Bikram yoga or what method he's following, but he's twisting like I don't know what. This ball is in the air. Second baseman calls off the first, and there's two away as Preston DiNapoli pops out to the edge of the outfield. Now here's Tommy Byrne.
So Byrne takes a four pitch, two out walk, and that'll put a second base runner on for Andrew Hoover, third baseman for the Bengals, coming to the plate now. Bengals enjoying a three run lead here in the top of the first inning. First pitch from Purcelli is a ball. Hoover fouls one off. That's the first strike in the last six pitches. And Andrew takes it over to the right side. One and one's the count. Porcelli looking back to second base. Riles Morris is out there. Comes in, just gets the outside edge of the plate, and it's now a ball and two strikes. Two on, two out. Andrew Hoover at the plate with a 1-2 count. Bengals up 3 to nothing. We're playing baseball here at Kane Bay High School in Monk's Corner if you're on your way. Come on out and see us and spend seven bucks. Two and two now. Porcelli comes set, deals to the plate, and it's high for ball three. Count now full on the Bengals' number five. Coach Vic Major over at first base, Andrew Taylor over at third. Both of them hoping to give their runners another chance to run, but they don't as Andrew Hoover goes down swinging. So at the middle of one... Kane Bay nothing, Lucy Beckham three. The Cobras will come and swing the bats for the first time tonight as they go to the home half of the frame and they'll face Preston DiNapoli on the mound. A quiet affair here tonight with no stadium music, no batter announcements, not even a national anthem tonight. Just don't feel like baseball, folks. We gave it to you at the beginning of the game, but let's walk you through the defensive posture for the Lucy Beckham Bengals tonight. On the inside track, Riles Morris over at first base, Tommy Byrne at second, Perrin catching at shortstop, and Andrew Hoover at third. On the outer ring, Holman Blake in left, Kevin Fagan in center, Kingston Kolb over in right. Tonight's starting pitcher is Preston DiNapoli, and the man behind the plate is none other than Hank Epley. Due up here for the Cobras. Shortstop Julian Morris, designated hitter Ethan Dodson, and first baseman Devin Hogue. Chris Kolb over here to my right. Colby Media never missing a game. Shooting with an especially long lens here, going deep out to center field with this, I think. Where are we shooting? We're getting, we're getting Preston DiNapoli. First pitch from the Bengals. Just misses outside, and it's ball one to start things off here. Come on, give him something to hit. Man. 
and Apple spikes one into the ground. Not the place he was looking to throw that. And now it's two and one here on Julian Minus. Minus had three at bats on Monday night's contest. Struck out once, had a hit. And now he fouls one off to even the count at two apiece. Go get him. Now another foul, this time to the left side. Count stays the same. And the umpire is going to need to ask for some baseballs here as the batters tonight have had a habit of fouling things off and they've lost track of some balls. Breaking ball doesn't break. And DiNapoli brings the count to three and two. From the windup. This ball is popped into the left side. Infield is going to have it. It'll be Preston, excuse me, no, it'll be Perrin Ketchin making the grab. And there's one away. Find it, kid. Believe in it. It's there. Now here's Ethan Dodson. Come on, have faith. Dodson had a strikeout and a walk, held hitless. However, that walk proved costly as he came in to score. Scored just one run on Monday. Now here he is in the second position on the batting order. Same place he was just 48 hours ago. Digs in, waits for the pitch. Just misses getting hit on the knees. And now it's 2-0. Dodson's the designated hitter, batting for his pitcher tonight. And now he fouls one back into Hank Epley's shin guard. And it's two balls and a strike. Come on, kid, work back. Dnap sends one in. It's going to be a base hit to the right side. Kingston Cole will grab it. And Dodson is limited to a single. Now here's first baseman Devin Hogue. We mentioned the other night Devin Hogue comes from Don't baby, right here. Somerville Vapor lineage. He had a big hit the other night. Ended the game with two hits, in fact, four RBIs. There's a reason he bats in the three hole. And tonight he puts one in the five, six hole on the bases. The throw from Perrin Ketchin is way off line. That's into right field. Kingston Kolb will have to hunt it down. And runners are left at the corners. Perrin Ketchin went way to his right to make the grab. Probably would have done well to hold that. He was so deep in that five, six hole. Moving over towards third base. Instead, he came up firing and just hey, never buddy. never had his feet underneath him. And that throw was way offline. About 20 or 30 feet left of first base. Yeah, he was throwing to second, but it was about 30 feet left of first base. Now here's Alvarez, the right fielder. And before we get another pitch to him, is gonna check over to first base. Yeah, you got it. Just relax. Alvarez and DiNapoli formerly played together years back. Now they face each other on opposite sides of this 60 feet, six inch gap. Alvarez trying to chip away at the three run lead that the Bengals have. DiNapoli trying to win a baseball game on his birthday. Several connections between these two teams, Kingston Kolb and Devin Hogue, former teammates in travel ball.
Ryan Brewington and Kevin Fagan. Ryan Brewington from the Cane Bay Cobras and Brewing, excuse me, and Fagan from the Bengals will not only be teammates at USC Sumter, but as we learned Monday evening, they'll be roommates. Deep breath, let it go, babe. Just more examples of how tight-knit this baseball community is here in the low country and how much fun it can be to watch these kids grow up together, compete with and against each other, and grow into young men. Now another check over to first base. And Alvarez steps out of the box for a moment. Full count. DiNapoli looks in, checks over to first, now comes set. He's coming to the plate. And it is sent out to center field on a rope. Kevin Fagan back for it. And he does not get it. Fagan hits the fence, falls down. Now he's throwing from his bottom. Sitting on the ground. Fagan makes the throw. Looked like he might have got his bell rung out there a little bit hitting that fence. I'm not sure if he slipped or if he hit it hard. But the end result is an RBI for Alvarez, and it's 3-1, to one, Lucy Beckham. Third baseman Connor Hirsch coming into the batter's box now. One away, runners at second and third for the Cobras. Connor Hirsch, the number five batter. And DiNapoli's going to step off. Mm, almost, almost. Wild pitch makes the count 2-0. and oh. It also brings in another run, and just like that, it is 3-2 with a runner on third and one away here in the bottom of the first inning. If you are in the 800-meter run or in the 400-meter hurdles, you're needed over at the track. And a walk puts another Cobra on the bases. Connor Hirsch goes to first. Alvarez over at third base. And now here's center fielder Carson Newberry. Hank Epley steps out in front of the plate, gives the first and third sign. Another thing we learned the other night, these boys have a different code card on their wrists every single game. Nothing stays the same. Complicated grid set, set up. And now here's a ball out to left field. This will tie the ball game. On the ground, Newberry takes it for a base hit RBI. And the Bengals and Cobras are even at three apiece. Mitchell Bennett, the second baseman, coming to the box. Gets his sign from down at the third base coach. And DiNapoli. Steps back onto the top of the hill. 
Bottom of the first inning, one away. Runners at first and second. And ball one bounces across the plate. Epley did a nice job blocking that one up, keeping the runners at the bags they're on. And here's a chopper to the third base side. He's going to take the double play. No. Andrew Hoover goes to second with it. It'll go down as a fielder's choice. Tommy Byrne made a nice throw over to first. But Mitchell Bennett was already there. So once again, first and third. Two away now. And DiNapoli will have the bottom of the order, Chandler Berry. Go get us out of here. Excuse me, no, he'll have Ryan Brewington, the catcher, to deal with. This is the number eight batter. And he does so with strike number one. As we said, Brewington going to college next year with Kevin Fagan. They'll play baseball together. They'll be roommates. I believe they've played baseball together before. There was a little friendly rivalry going between them at the beginning of the game. Apparently Brewington told him, you're going to get a fastball first, but that's the only thing I'll tell you. A little courtesy from the opposition there. Get one. That's all you're going to get. O2 pitch. DiNapoli trying to get out of the bottom of the first here. 90 feet away, there's a Cobra trying to do something, and instead we'll have runners at second and third. And Mitchell Bennett takes second base. At the head now, let's go. Epley decided not to throw down there, instead challenging over to third with a hard look. Not getting baited into the throw and steal. Curveball gets him. That's a strikeout. That'll end the top of the excuse me, the bottom of the first inning. However, after posting three in the top half, the Cane Bay Cobras answer right back. We have a tie ball game going into the second. Lucy Beckham having their conference, not the way they wanted that first inning to go. And it'll be a regrouping. As Coach B.J. McConnell pumps a little fire into these boys' bellies. Do up here for Lucy Beckham. The numbers nine, one, and two batters. That's Holman Blake, Perrin Ketchen, and Kevin Fagan. Luke Porcelli back out on the mound. Getting a second inning of work as the starting pitcher tonight for Kane Bay. We're up in the Somerville Monks Corner area at Kane Bay High School, right off of 17A, just a couple miles down the road. This whole Cane Bay area has grown up almost overnight. Restaurants, retail, grocery stores, and tons and tons of housing. This is one of the fastest growing parts of the Tri-County area. Everywhere you look, there is construction. One place that is not getting improved here is out in center field. The batter's eye out there has definitely seen better days. The black netting, or I'm not sure if that's plastic or what it is out there making up the batter's eye, but it is falling apart in the worst way out there. It just looks awful. Warm-ups are done. A little pep talk from the first and third baseman, and Porcelli steps onto the mound, ready to face Holman Blake here in the top of the second inning. 3-3 three to three is the score as we play baseball at Cane Bay High School in Cobras Park. First pitch in the top half of the second is fouled away. That one's going over to the right side out of play.
Now's a good time to always say thank you to the good folks up in Shelby, North Carolina. I'm sure you're watching your grandson. One two count here on Ed and Janice's grandson. Now two two. Blake watches one slide out to the outside. Looked like that one just didn't get the break. And now Porcelli comes set. And again outside. Count comes full. Lead off batter here in the top of the second inning. Holman trying to get something broken open, reclaim the lead. Bengals dominated by a 10-run mercy rule on Monday, and now they start the second inning off with a swinging strikeout. So that'll do it for the first time through the order. We'll go to the top where Perrin Ketchin comes back up. He started things off with a leadoff hit. Second pitch of the game got Perrin catching on. And now he'd like to do some more of that. Ketchin went one for three on Monday. Had a hit, had a walk. Scored a couple of runs. Waits on it now. That breaking ball started high and stayed up there. Never quite dropped into the zone. And now it's two and one. Three to three in the top of the second inning. One out after the Holman Blake strikeout. Now Perrin Ketchin takes ball number three high and away. Porcelli has really had trouble bringing the pitches in. He keeps throwing them to the outside edge. He's gotten a couple of good calls going his way. But for the most part, he's been outside for the majority of his pitches. Ketchin thought that was ball four, and that was one of those favorable calls that the man in black gave him. Now the count is full. Catching usually a very selective hitter, likes what he likes. This time he swings away, and there's two strikeouts. And here's Kevin Fagan. Fagan comes to the plate. Nobody on, two away here in the top of the second inning. Tie score, Porcelli in the... Stretch comes set, leg kick, here's the throw, and it has popped up. Looks like it'll be in foul territory, might be out of play. Bengals don't move an inch off the <laughs> dugout fence. Nobody saw that, bro. What was it? I was looking away to check something out and missed Mr. Blue spiking a baseball. That wasn't recorded on YouTube, was it? <laughs> Lives in infamy. One ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on. 3-3 three, three is your score. Cobra's throwing, Bengals swinging. Not on that pitch. 2-1. to one. Excuse me, 2-1. and one. Low pitch gets the strike call. Now two and two. And that pitch just off the floor. Must have fallen like crazy. 
Now Porcelli comes set. And it'll be a full count. Don't help him, Kev. Don't help him. Porcelli's had two strikeouts here in the inning. He's looking for his third. Kevin Fagan trying to be spoiler. Instead, he gets the call. One, two, three. Down go the Bengals. So at the middle of two, we have a tie game. It's three to three here at Cobra Park. It has just been brought to my attention that Kevin Bilodeau at Live 5 News, who was kind enough to put some stuff on both the media broadcast as well as his own Twitter, called the baseball field at Lucy Beckham High School, the Lucy Beckham Baseball Complex. Those of you who have been around for most of the season know that it is not the Lucy Beckham Baseball Complex. It is, in fact, the back. Kevin, if you're listening, if you're watching, you can do better, sir. <laughs> Kevin was over at the ball game Monday night, getting some footage over there. Did a nice piece, like I said. Put that on Channel 5. Scott Eisberg also over there, showing... Showing what Channel 4 has to say about it. Good guys both in sports. Appreciate you covering these guys and giving them a shout out when they're doing great. They had Hunter Doyle on there. They had Preston DiNapoli's big hit down to the left field corner. They had Tommy Byrne going extra bases. They also had Devin Hogue from Kane Bay. All of that added up to a 14-4 win for Lucy Beckham. Now here in the bottom of the second inning. Things will start off as the number nine batter in the order, left fielder Chandler Berry, comes up to the plate. He swings away at the first pitch he sees. Yeah. There you go, baby. There you go. Now it's one and one. DiNapoli starting to feel a little bit of a groove. Does not get the call on that. That was a pretty pitch. Just missing underneath the knees. And now it's two and one. Birthday boy shrugs one off. Now he steps off and asks for his sign again. And the third ball is sent in just inside. Three and one is the count now. As Barry waits on it. Barry tosses his bat, heads to first base. Umpire brings him back and rings up strike number two. There's been a couple of times of that this evening. Hit your spots, kid. Now the full count pitch from the windup. Barry tried to check his swing, came all the way around. Drop third strike, and Hank Epley quickly scoops it up and puts a tag on to make sure that we have the insurance, and out number one is in the books. Back to the top of the order. It'll be Julian Minus, the Cobra's shortstop, at the plate. Minus takes this ball in the air to left field. Holman Blake gets underneath it, and now there's two away. Blake took about three or four steps to his left, got underneath, and let it sail into the leather. And now here's Ethan Dodson. This is where the trouble started for him in the first inning. Dodson reached, ended up coming around and scoring. This time it's a two-out situation with nobody on. Dodson has harder work to do, and he's going to take this one. Foul down the first base line. Home plate umpire looked at it needed to because the first base umpire was 
twisting and spinning out of the way of that baseball. Let's go, kid. Get ahead. Get ahead now. If you are in the girls' high jump, you are needed at the track meet. Not sure how many people we have heading over there, Matt. That is a sizable track meet. They have a they have a healthy crowd over there. I saw Philip Simmons, North Charleston. Here we have a ball on the ground. That ball has a nasty hop. Gets over Tommy Byrne, who had set up on it. A foul hop. Holy cow, that thing jumped. Nothing you can do. Come back. Burn was set up on it, ready to make the toss over to first base for the easy out. And when that ball hit the dirt, it skyrocketed up over his glove. Now here's Devin Hogue. Devin Hogue was the man who created so much trouble with Runners on the bases. Cobra's getting excited. Two away, one on. Now Hank Epley. There was something missed there. Runner took off for first. Pitch came in and Hank Epley not in a position to throw. I'm not sure what the miscommunication was, but Coach Vic Major immediately yelled to Hank Epley, go talk to him. So a quick meeting at the mound. Cards have been sorted out. And now Hogue sits on a 2-0 count. DiNapoli delivers. Curveball just misses. Looked pretty good from back here. Now 3-0. However, if you're going to take the bat out of somebody's hand in this lineup, Devin Hoog's not a bad one to do it to. Much better to get strikes. And there's one of them. Three and one now. Hoog takes pitch number four. Dodson over at second base. Gets his secondary lead. Now strike number two comes in. That was a perfectly placed ball. And the count is full with two outs. Tie game here in the top of the, excuse me, bottom of the second. Three to three. Lucy Beckham struck first, and the Cobras answered right back in the bottom. There's been no scoring so far here in the second inning. Mostly cloudy sky out here. Lights are on. Really no chance of rain. And that breaking ball just did not fall quite far enough. Hogue is a big kid, but that still sat right above the numbers on him. Don't worry about it, kid. It's there. Now here's Alvarez. Anthony Alvarez brought in two runs earlier. He's got two on the bases now, and he's also got two in the mud as the Bengals try to get out number three. DiNapoli comes set, glances back over to second base, now does a second look, decides to come to the plate with it, and it's fouled away. And baseball is headed over towards the junior varsity game where James Island and Kane Bay are doing battle back here on the field behind us. Cobra Park has two baseball fields, a softball field, and I'm not sure if the other one's a softball or a practice field. They've got a four-diamond complex here. O2 count. Alvarez has fouled one and looked at one. And now Dnap trying to fight his way back from a tough spot here. Runners both take off. Throw down to third. Hoover does a nice job picking it, but both runners are safe.
That ball had trouble on it coming out of Hank Epley's hand. It was low. Landed into the dirt. About five feet short of the bag, but Hoover did a nice job keeping it in front of him and keeping the run off the boards. Two and two now is the count. Alvarez has win, kid, win. Alvarez has both runners in scoring position. It's Devin Hogue at third. And Dodson over at third base. Wild pitch, sails up above. Epley gets to it, no chance, and the Cobras take the lead. It's the first time they've had a lead in this year's matchup between the Bengals and them. It's 4-3 to three in the bottom of the second inning. Dodson came across the plate. Hogue ended up at third base, and Alvarez still sitting on a full count with two outs, trying to do something about expanding that. DiNapoli comes set, delivers, and it's a high ball to walk him. Now here's third baseman Connor Hirsch. Hirsch, who had a walk in his first plate appearance, takes strike number one. That outer edge getting a little bit swollen there, and now he looks down and gets a sign. Runners at the corners, Alvarez at first, Hogue at third. Four to three is the score, and Hirsch swings away. O2 count. DiNapoli glances to first. Alvarez in a pink arm sleeve gets a little bit extra lead. And ball number one floats softly in. Trust it, kid, trust it. Ball two. Staying up high. DiNapoli trying to come back down the ladder a little bit. Most of the balls that he has thrown tonight have been high. He's been missing up, whereas Porcelli has been missing away. And this ball is on the ground. Perrin catching to Tommy Byrne. The 6-4 put out takes care of things. However, the lead has changed hands. Lucy Beckham trails by a run now as they come in to bat in the top half of the third. It's 4-3 to three here in Cane Bay, Cobras Park. Got to the ballpark this evening. It's... A couple minutes before six, got everything out of the car, walked up to the ticket booth, got ready to buy my ticket with my hands full of stuff and found out that I was in the wrong spot. I was at a track meet and a soccer practice. Back to the car, load back up, find the new parking lot, find the new ticket booth. Seven dollars plus a dollar fifty-five service charge online. And a few minutes later, got in here to Cobra's Park. As we've said, a couple of ball games here in progress. We got this varsity contest. We got a JV game behind us. Nothing doing on the softball fields except for a little bit of screwing around by some of the younger students. Looks like right now there's some very, very questionable raking going on on the softball field. Snow plowing the dirt seems to be a better description for it.
I've often heard that the dirt here is very hoppy. It looks nice, but not well maintained in some cases. It gets to be a little bit uh, iffy from spot to spot. Hopefully Hank Epley can find the spots as he starts things out here in the third inning. He's the man at the plate. And he'll take ball number one. We've played travel ball here. We've played junior varsity. I believe we played a junior varsity game up here one time as part of a tournament. Maybe it was a varsity game. I'm not sure. We did not see Cane Bay last year. At least not at the varsity level. Lucy Beckham, a 4A school. These Cane Bay Cobras, a 5A. So not regularly on each other's schedule, but that might change next year as Beckham goes to the 5A level. 2-1 and one now as you count. Hank Epley at the plate. Lead-off batter in this top of the third. Porcelli at the mound. He'll go upstairs and he'll miss, bringing the count to three balls and a strike. I think my incense thing is... I need a relight. Looks like there's a little life left in it. Matt Napoli over here to the left. This ball is sky high on the infield. Devin Hogue is there at first base and he'll take care of it. Epley is retired and here Riles Morris is. Matt Napoli to my left tonight. No headphones or microphone, just playing daddy duty. Watching his birthday boy turn 17 and work hard out on the mound tonight. Speaking of working hard, Riles Morris. He'll watch strike number one. His first at-bat started off the same way, seeing that wide pitch. Left-handed batter, and Porcelli still swing, pitching away from him. A little bit of a fall on that ball. Nicely actually thrown. And now on the 0-2, Morris swings away and it's going to be fouled out of play to the left side. Haven't had a canine report in a while, so we'll give you one here. we got a Boykin Spaniel that's shown up at the ballpark. Appears to be a Cane Bay Cobra fan. Sitting back between me and the concession stand, guarding me from those hot dogs. Really guarding me from the nachos. Morris swings away. There's two down here. Top of the third inning, and Kingston Kolb will have the opportunity to start something up. It'll be up to him if these Bengals want to fight back here. Chip away at that ugly 4-3 to three deficit you see up on the board. He goes sky high with this one. It's going towards shallow center. Second baseman was out for it. Instead, center fielder Carson Newberry comes in charging, and there's three away. So at the split, here in the third inning, Lucy Beckham trails by a run. It's four to three. Cobra's on top. Matt, we should probably also call out Count on Two News, where our good friend Rob Fowler is the chief meteorologist. Rob, as you might recall, back in an early game this season, sat in the booth with us after throwing out the first pitch and spent the entire evening chatting along and having a great time. Said he had formerly called 
balls and strikes as a sports reporter. Sat there and had a great night with us. However, we have not seen his cameras at the field. We've seen Channel 5. We've seen Channel 4. Where are you, Channel 2? What you doing? The gauntlet has been thrown down. Scott Eisberg over at Channel 4 is everywhere with the camera. Probably right behind him as far as people that I see at the fields, whether it's football season over at the district stadium or if it's baseball at the back, Kevin Bielado. I don't know if Scott Eisberg does anything other than filming sports. I don't know if he's got a family. I don't know if his kids miss him. I don't know if he needs to call his mom. He is always at a baseball field or a football field or a soccer field or a lacrosse field. Or... That man does not sleep. Always good to see him. Now pitching for the Bengals, Levi Schrock. And the first pitch he sends is drilled out to right center. Kevin Fagan does a nice job getting over to it. He and Kingston Cole both on the run. That was number five, Myers, who was batting for Carson Newberry, I believe. Now here's Mitchell Bennett. Levi Schrock gets his bearings. Bunt is shown. Bunt is pulled back, and it's taken for strike number one. Yeah, that was C.J. Myers who hit that line drive out to right center. Turned out to only be a single, now a close play over at first on the pickoff attempt, and Myers is safe. Another toss over to first. Same result, Mitchell Bennett waits for his pitch. Shuffling as we are through papers and photographs of rosters, making sure we know who's who in the zoo here. Bennett shows bunt again. The second baseman draws it back. This time it's taken for a ball, and the count is one and one. Bottom of the third inning, four to three. Cobra's on top of the Bengals. Levi Schrock, the first reliever that we've seen in the game. Game plan here tonight, as I understand, was to have each pitcher do a couple of innings. Preston DiNapoli did just that. He pitched two. Take a look at his numbers here in just a moment as we watch this battle with Mitchell Bennett play out as Levi Schrock also tries to deal with what's on first. Bunt. And they get him at second, or excuse me, at third base. Nicely done. The bunt is laid down. Levi Schrock goes to Tommy Byrne over at first. C.J. Myers continued around second, going for third. Andrew Hoover, who had crashed for the bunt, had to hustle back to third base, and the throw is right there. Andrew Hoover gets him. Now there's two away here in the bottom of the third. Nice defensive work by the Bengals. Hopefully that's the spark they need to turn this around, and Levi Schrock sends strike number one into the plate. Ryan Brewington, the batter, the number eight batter in this lineup. Schrock trying to keep him from reaching first. Brewington almost kills a child back by the concession stand. Those of you working for the South Carolina Department of Social Services, please don't take note of that. And strike number three gets him. So some fine defense. And a strikeout from Levi Schrock ends the third inning. We go to the top of the fourth for the Bengals to come in and swing the bats. The bats need to get hot. It's four to three. Cobra's on top.
Preston DiNapoli at the plate. Staying in the game after coming out as the pitcher, he was listed on the original lineup as both designated hitter and pitcher. Now he launches one a mile high. Three Cobras underneath it. It'll be the shortstop that takes care of it. And there's one away. That was Julian Morris making the out. And now here's Tommy Byrne. Silence shall ensue as I videotape this. So a ground out by Tommy Byrne brings up Andrew Hoover. Byrne and Hoover combined in the top half of the inning, excuse me, the bottom half of the last inning for a nice double play. An unusual one, it was the old 1-4-5 double play. And that took runners off the corners. However, DiNapoli and Byrne both early outs here in the top half of the fourth. And once again, it'll have to be a two out start. Andrew Hoover, the man with the opportunity. Porcelli from a stretch. Back to his old habits of missing high and away. Russell Thompson and Trip Hoover and Dave Schrock holding court here at the top of the bleachers. Kevin Rogan also up there. The Blakes and the Epleys all here. I also see Tammy Kolb up there hunkered down for the night. Nikki and Stewart catching and enjoying some baseball. Nikki able to actually watch and not have to run anything. Now this shot is up the middle. Oh, nicely done by Julian. Holy cow. Julian Minus comes across. That shot was going straight up the middle. And Julian Minus, like a vacuum, grabbed that thing and a sharp throw over to first. Steals Hoover's opportunity there. So for the... At least second time tonight, the Bengals go down one, two, three. They have not scored since those three runs at the top of the first. And they trail now by a run. It's four to three in the bottom of the fourth inning. Levi Schrock on the mound. And the Bengals will have to defend. Nice folks over at the concession stand here at Cane Bay. Kind enough to let me charge my power block for a little while, get some juice in that, so we can make sure we don't run out of battery as we bring you tonight's game. First pitch in the air, Barry skies it up, and Tommy Byrne, nary a step to go get it. So one pitch, one away. Now here's Julian Minus, that shortstop who has been 
handy with the bat, but very handy in the field and a defensive structure. That last play he had was really an outstanding one. Now he pops one up and it'll be his counterpart, Perrin Ketchin, who grabs that. So, two pitches, two outs. And the number two batter. Here's designated hitter Ethan Hodson. Excuse me, Dodson. I'm looking at two different things here. Dodson pulls his hands back just slightly. Looked like a nice strike. Called for ball one. Little inside, says the umpire, and now Dodson's back in. Swing and a miss, evens the count. Nobody on, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Kane Bay leading by a run. Track meet still going on. Start gun just fires again, and now it's on a one-two pitch. This ball is out to right field. Kingston Kolb going deep to the corner. It's going to be extra bases. Kolb's throw coming in. Play at the base. Dodson slides in safely. Now Devin Hogue, number three batter and first baseman for the Cobras, comes to the plate for the third time tonight. We talked a little bit about the quality and condition of this baseball field. The dirt in particular looks nice, but it lacks a lot of clay. You can see in the batter's box and the catcher's box, there's big indentations where the boys stand. It looks like it gets a nice rake to make it look pretty. But not a lot of meat and potatoes underneath it. Hogue swings away, now 0-2. Boys over in the right side dugout, starting to chirp, cheering for their pitcher. Left side dugout returns the favor. Now here's a ball down on the ground, and Epley blocks it up off the chest protector. Dodson at second base after that right side double. Now Hogue who himself is dangerous with a bat. A nice back pick from Hank Epley. Andrew Hoover puts the tag down and the umpire calls Dodson safe at third. So is stolen base for Dodson, now 90 feet away from being an insurance run for the Cobras. Levi Schrock trying to get Devin Hogue out. And he does it. Called strike three, ends the inning. That'll also bring the Bengals back out, trying to swing the bats. The bats have been cold for three innings. Fans of Major League, go get a bucket of chicken. We need Joe Boo. Not trying to start a religious war, just saying Jesus Christ might have trouble hitting a hanging curve. I know on this broadcast we've talked a lot about movies and that's because I am one of the world's biggest movie buffs. Haven't seen them all, some I don't care to see, but God love a good baseball movie. And one of the best ones of course is Major League. Anybody who says that they need to 
think about an opportunity to be a manager while they sell a guy a set of white walls. Just a fantastic movie. It's held up for 35 years, although I will say Major League 2 and Major League 3, eh, not so much. So the Cobras will have a new man on the mound. Connor Hirsch taking over as the gunslinger up there on the hill. He's a right-handed thrower. Starting pitcher tonight, Porcelli was a lefty. And Hirsch's first pitch is down in the dirt. Haven't seen anything from this young man before. Hirsch was the third baseman, now on the hill. And if I'm not mistaken, Purcelli has been moved as well. He is, I believe, now at second base. Nope, I take that back. Mitchell Bennett's still at second. Alvarez in right. Devin Hogue at first. Third baseman is now Drake Nichols. And a ball is hit to the right side. Holman Blake grounds out to second. And now Perrin Ketchin comes to the plate. Ketchin likes the first pitch he sees, swings away, misses, strike number one. Matt, you said thumbs up on the concession stand? I have a hot dog. It's kind of ho-hum. Mind if I reach over here and grab one of these? I can't trust you with the... Oh, that's good stuff. Real good. See if we can't get some of that nacho action over at our place. I can't imagine it. I just can't taste it yet. A ball and two strikes here on Perrin Ketchin. He steps out, makes a couple of adjustments, gets back in the box, and now he's ready to go. Catching hustles down the line. However, the ball is killed just on the foul side of the third base stripe. And he'll come back and do it again. Connor Hirsch working with a 1 2 count on catching. Sign comes in from the bank, or excuse me, from the uh, Cobras dugout. Relayed out to the mound, and now here's the leg kick and a pitch. That thing is overthrown. And the count is two and two. Nobody on, one out. Four to three is the score. Cobra is leading by a run. Cloud of dust hanging in the air right here above the batter circle. Good night, Pat. Now 
Now here's the payoff pitch on the full count. Hirsch comes set, delivers. This ball is in the air to right side. Could drop, will not. Alvarez out there and makes the grab. Two away now for Kevin Fagan. Ryan Brewington screwing with his first or his future roommate, moving the bat just past where Kevin Fagan was trying to grab it. Smile on both young men. They're going to have some fun over the next couple of years up there at Sumter. There's also a chance they'll need bail money, but they're going to have fun. And Fagan is plunked on the first pitch, so he'll be a base runner. That one got him on the, looks like maybe his shoulder blade and back. So any which way they can get on, and now Hank Epley will have the responsibility of moving Fagan around the bases. Fagan represents the tying run, Epley the go-ahead. Two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Hirsch looks over to first. He's got his back towards him. And Epley follows one away. one count and this one is a hard chopper to the third base a nice jump and a nice play that's one thing about having home field home field advantage you know how that ball is going to play at any point so a 5-3 put out ends the top half of the inning we go to the home half of the side here, and it's still a one-run ball game. Not the same kind of contest we saw Monday night. That was a 10-run mercy rule end. It only took six to get there. And here we are in the fifth now. Another race starts over there at the track meet. So Anthony Alvarez starts things off here in the bottom half of the fifth. He'll face Levi Schrock once again, and this one is fouled off. Back onto the concourse outside the concession stand, and no nachos were harmed in that play. Wait a minute. Looking over here at Matt DiNapoli. Yes, there were. You killed those things. I see one or two still in there. Go scrounging, man. That's down deep in the cheese sauce. You got to be willing to. Uh, you got to be willing to go fishing for those. Speaking of fishing, Alvarez puts some bait on a line and it is caught out in left field. Holman Blake out there to bring it in. Had to turn and head towards the fence, but he still made the play. So nicely done by the Bengals left fielder. Now here's Connor Hirsch, 
trying to help himself. Originally the third baseman, now the pitcher. And the first pitch he sees is ball number one. Told you we'd take a look at Preston DiNapoli's start just a little bit ago. Never got a chance to do that, so we'll do it now. DiNapoli pitched two innings, threw 60 pitches in those two innings, half of them balls, half of them strikes. Here's a ball in the air. This one's sky high. Perrin Ketchin comes over behind Andrew Hoover, and he'll make the play. He was backed up by Holman Blake. Three Bengals right over there in case it drifted one direction or another, and Ketchin takes care of the honors. Now here's C.J. Myers. Myers had that nice hit to the right side before. Two outs on him now, and he won't be able to do anything with an outside pitch from Schrock. Schrock worked outside, now comes inside. Both of them miss. 2-0 count. Nobody on, two outs. Bottom of the fifth inning here. It's three to four. Bengals trailing. And Myers puts one in the air. This one's in foul territory. Holman Blake, about 15 feet to the left side of the line, will make the grab. So another zero on the board. But it's that pesky number one in the second inning that has given the Cane Bay Cobras a one-run lead on top of the Lucy Beckham Bengals. It's four to three as we play ball in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Well, in Monk's Corner, Somerville area. I'm not sure where we exactly are. It's kind of halfway in between the two. We're in Cane Bay, which is getting to be a town of its own. But we're at Cobras Park at Cane Bay High School, watching baseball, listening to a track meet, and having a good time either way. Matt DiNapoli sitting in a nacho cheese and jalapeno coma over here, drooling upon himself. Hot peppers, huh? <laughs> you, need a, you need a tissue to wipe the sweat off your brow? That's a little Carolina Reaper action? You didn't know they were hot. But you didn't know she meant hot. That's hot. <laughs> Connor Hirsch back on the hill. Riles Morris in the box. Starting things out here in the top of the sixth inning. Due up behind Riles is Kingston Kolb and Preston DiNapoli. Need to get things fired up. This is a great spot in the lineup to do it. And Hirsch's first pitch runs high and away. Rusty Blake over here taking some film. Neither Kevin nor Catherine here tonight. Unfortunately not able to join us. However, I'm sure that the more the, the uh, Riles Morris's grandparents are watching, they always are. Love having you along. Here's your grandson, shoots one to the left side. Third baseman makes the error. Fumbles it, can't come up with it, tosses it over to first, and by the time Devin Hogue gets it, it's low on the ground, and Morris is safe at first. See how that one gets scored. And now Kingston Kolb steps into the box. That's, that play was scored as a reached on error. The third baseman, Nichols, charged with that error, fumbled it, finally got it, and then made the low throw. Devin Hogue couldn't do much with it. So the error credited to Nichols. 
pickoff attempt over to first base, followed by an assassination attempt by Kingston Kolb. He put that one straight toward the third base dugout. Cobra's back into the basket. A mongoose coming after him over there. Kingston Cole now shows bunt, leaves it out there, chips one foul, and the count goes to 0-2. Riles Morris still over at first base, having a little conversation with his counterpart. Morris and Hogue have played travel ball against each other. I can't tell you how many times. Hirsch comes set, now goes to first base, and Morris's uniform gets just a little bit dirtier. Kolb waits on it. This one back up the middle, off Hirsch's glove. He misplays that. Julian Minus was breaking to his left, thinking that he was going to be able to make that play and get the double play. Instead, Hirsch knocks it offline, and everybody's safe. Now here's the birthday kid himself, 17-year-old Preston DiNapoli coming into the box. And he's got a two-on, no-out situation. DNAP looking for another one of those hits like he had Monday night where he sent a double deep into the left field corner all the way out to the pole. Scored two, took a couple bases himself. Now he shows bunt. And it's followed back here towards us. Baseball wrapping up over on the JV side. Don't see a final score, but we'll try to get something for it. That was the James Island Kane Bay game. Preston DiNapoli now asks for time, steps out. And we'll get the ball back in play. Hirsch from the stretch, comes set, looks back at second base. DiNapoli takes strike number two, grins about it, doesn't think that it quite was. I don't know if the runners were planning on going or what he was chuckling about, but I think he liked that pitch. Long look back to second. Now here's the delivery, high and away, ball number one. One-two count on DiNapoli. Designated hitter stays in. And DiNapoli goes down on strikes. 9-7 to seven was the final score. James Island on top of Kane Bay in that JV game. And I'll step away and do some fatherly responsibilities as Tommy Byrne comes to the plate.
So Tommy Byrne chops one over to the left side. Third baseman comes in to grab it, and both runners advance. Two outs now for Andrew Hoover with runners in scoring position. Riles Morris at third, Kingston Cold at second. Those are the tying and go-ahead runs. Hoover trying to make it happen here and a nice spot to hit out in right center if he can just place the ball where he wants it. This ball is in the air. Should be an out. It is. Center fielder out there to grab it. And the Bengals strand two. Still trailing by a run here at the end of at the end of six. Or excuse me, at the middle of six. We're an hour and 39 minutes into this baseball game. The JV game report was 9-7 final score. James Island on top of Kane Bay said that the winning runs came in right at time. James Island is headed to the cars. And Kane Bay's JV squad is just now wrapping up the meeting on the field. Concession stand mostly shut down now. It looks like a couple of people still cleaning up in there, but no more nachos and jalapenos for you, Matt. What you going to do? <laughs> Bengals trying to come back on this one. Levi Schrock staying in the game. This is his fourth inning of work. He's worked fairly efficiently. Take a look at his numbers thus far. Schrock has thrown 27 so far in his three innings of work. And pitch number 28 is knocked sky high. Perrin catching out to grab it. And Mitchell Bennett is retired with one pitch. Now here's Ryan Brewington, Cobra's catcher. Schrock working from the stretch as he usually does. Does not usually switch to the windup. And Brewington sends one off to the left side, foul. Anybody walk into the parking lot might want to cover their heads. Brewington waits on the second pitch, takes it, falls low, and it's one and one. That pitch actually looked pretty good coming across the plate. Not sure where it fell, but now. <laughs> Brewington fouls one back and wakes up a couple of people who are starting to nod off here in this late twilight of the game. Beautiful pitch from Schrock. Does not get the call. Two and two is the count. Some that ball was nicely placed and it just does not get rung up. Schrock comes high and inside. Brewington fights it off. Just off the shank of the bat and it goes foul towards his third base coach. Count stays the same. It's two and two. There's one out. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Schrock falls off the rubber. No harm, no foul as nobody's on. Would have been a balk. I'll go back and do some work on the cleat cleaner back there at the back of the mound. And we'll try it again. Ah! 
On the full count, Brewington fouls one off. Trying the full count again here. This time it is sent in. It's knocked to the third base side. Andrew Hoover comes up with it. Nice diving grab. And a beautiful play. Andrew Hoover and Riles Morris combined. A big dive, a hard throw, and a nice stretch. Brewington retired. Beautiful work by the third baseman. That's a couple of times that Andrew Hoover has done a great job out there tonight. Some strong defensive work from that third baseman. Really doing a nice job. Coach B.J. McConnell comes out of the dugout. He'll send Levi Schrock back. And he gets greeted by the rest of the Bengals after a nice evening of work. He's had a strong hold. Coming in and pitching the third, fourth, fifth, and now two-thirds of the sixth. It looks like we will go with Michael Mapes. Michael Mapes will be the third pitcher for the Bengals tonight. Tracy, if you're still at work, listen up. Chad, I know you were at that B-team game over at the Beck tonight. Turn the volume up. Your kid's on the mound. While we have Michael Mapes get warmed up here, let's take a look at how Levi Schrock's night ended. He threw 36 pitches, 24 of those were strikes. He faced 12 batters, had two strikeouts, gave up two hits, and that was in three and two thirds innings of work. No runs and no walks. So a nice showing from Schrock, sophomore pitcher who's really been a staple of the pitching rotation here for the Bengals. We mentioned just a minute ago, Chad Mapes over there at the B-team game. They were playing at the back tonight, taking on Cario Middle School. Was it Cario? No. Moultrie. Tonight was Moultrie. Ooh, they gave up a tough one. 11 to nothing was the final score over there. Not sure what happened with that. Last time they faced the Moultrie Patriots, they came away with a one-run win, 5-4. to four. I guess Moultrie came back with a vengeance, 11 to nothing. That's a tough way to go down. They've got one more day of baseball ahead of them. That'll be this Saturday over at Hanahan High School, Hanahan High School for a doubleheader. First pitch at 11 o'clock. Those will be five inning games. Now here's Chandler Berry, left fielder for the Cobras, number nine batter in the lineup, and he t takes strike one from Mapes. Mapes misses low, evens the count up. Mapes delivers, gets the outside edge, now a ball and two strikes. JV Cobras over there raking out their field. Oh, and a strikeout for Michael Mapes. He gets Barry swinging. That ends the sixth. We'll go to the seventh. One more chance for these Bengals to do something. Do or die time here as the Bengals trail three runs to four. 
Wednesday night baseball in Cane Bay, Berkeley County, South Carolina. Bengals trying to protect their win streak. They've had five wins in a row. Cane Bay, not quite as lucky. They've been on a losing streak, and if it's up to B.J. McConnell, the boys in gray will help them keep that going. <laughs> I won't speculate. What I will do is hope that Ed and Janice's grandson, Holman Blake, can get things started here in the bottom, or excuse me, the top of the seventh inning. I keep wanting to say bottom. I feel like we've played so many games at the Beck lately that I'm used to these boys being the home team. Holman Blake starts things off. It'll be the 10 1 and 2 batters pairing catching over in the on deck circle. Kevin Fagan behind him, and if he gets on, Riles Mor or Hank Epley and Riles Morris. Blake fouls one off. Hirsch deals it in, and now fouled in. Stays in the box. That one doesn't travel very far, but an 0 2 count, just the same. That has been a tough spot right there. This umpire this evening has called that both ways. You never know what you're going to get. This time it goes the Bengals' direction. It's a ball and two strikes. That outside away, excuse me, that outside low pitch. That has been extremely inconsistent. And now strike three gets Holman on the swing. Aaron Ketching comes to the plate. He's got one of the four hits tonight for Lucy Beckham. Other batters who have shown production tonight, Kevin Fagan, Hank Epley, and Kingston Kolb. Perrin also has one of the eight strikeouts. Don't need any more of those here. Need another inning like that top of the first where the Bengals plated three. Those are unfortunately the only three runs that the boys from Mount Pleasant have sent across the plate. And it's time to change that with Perrin Ketchen and Kevin Fagan, these two seniors, at the plate and on deck. There's a ball up the middle. That one's going to be a base hit. Perrin Ketchen with a single. Thinks about getting an extra base as center fielder. Carson Newberry has a little bit of trouble picking that one up. Now here's Fagan. Quick grin to his buddy. And he's in the box. Hirsch looks back. Checks first base. Now he's going to throw to it. And catching is safe. First pitch to Fagan, swing and a miss. Only about a dozen fans here for Lucy Beckham tonight. There were more, the crowd has thinned. Now past, excuse me, a uh, wild pitch there. Gives Kev, uh, I can't talk. A wild pitch gives Perrin Ketchin an extra base. Brewington did a nice job trying to block it, but it rolled off to his right. And Fagan has the tying run in scoring position. The 
Not a chance to do anything with it, but a beautiful play. That had trouble written all over it, and Drake Nichols dove to his right for it. Came down hard on the base, but not enough time to do anything, so it'll be an infield hit for Fagan. And now Riles Morris steps into the on-deck circle while Hank Epley comes to the plate. Epley's had a hit and scored a run tonight. Need more of that. And that pitch is fouled off back to the JV field. Top of the seventh. Bengals trail by a run. It's three to four. Cobra's on top. Two on, one out, and an 0-1 pitch. Another ball down in the dirt. Blocked up this time by Brewington. Nobody will move. That play by Nichols, just a fantastic effort from the young man at third base. Perrin Ketchin thought about challenging him, but there was no throw to first, so he made the wise decision to stay where he was. Cobra's head coach will come out. Actually, that's not their head coach. Now it's their pitching coach coming out to the mound. They'll have their conference. B.J. McConnell and Vic Major will hold one over here on the right side. Andrew Taylor. A little bit of strategery coming through here. Umpire records the mound visit, and both meetings are adjourned. Perrin catching on second base. Kevin Fagan on first. Hank Epley in the box. There's not much better of a combination in this Bengals dugout than these three when it comes to needing a critical run. We've seen Hank Epley be able to put things over the fence. This would be a fine time to do it. And the inside pitch will not get that done. Connor Hirsch on the mound. He's the second pitcher for Kane Bay this evening. This ball is over to the right side. Second baseman makes an error. Heron Ketchin coming home. He ties it. He's across the plate. Four to four. Lucy Beckham ties the game. Nice piece of hitting. Little bit of luck. Never give up on the baseball gods. Top of the seventh inning. And Lucy Beckham has a new ball game. Fagan ended up at second. Epley ended up at first. And now here's Riles Morris. Riles, just be athletic, kid. No thinking. Kevin Morris put the Xbox controller down. No more Fortnite for the next two minutes. You got some baseball to watch. <laughs> All right, no thinking, no thinking. Ball one sails in just a little low and wide. Hirsch comes set, looks back to second base. And just outside again, ball two. Top of the seventh. Four to four baseball game. Hirsch comes set, long look back. This ball is in the air. This is gonna get caught. And no chance for the sacrifice fly. Carson Newberry came in on it. It was a shallow ball to center field. Not very far from where Kevin Fagan stands at second base, and the Bengals make good decisions to stay where they are and let Kingston Kolb do the next fight for them. Big hole in left center, also one. And that's going to load the bases with a hit batsman. First pitch puts Kingston on. That one came across the front side of him. And now here's Preston DiNapoli. 
DNAP had a beautiful shot Monday night. That one made the press. Now on his birthday, Preston DiNapoli in a great spot to do something big. Bases loaded, top of the seventh, tie game, two outs. Four to four is the score, and Hirsch's first pitch is spiked. This one is going to get Fagan in. Fagan takes the lead. Five to four, Lucy Beckham. That ball bounced funny off the catcher. It ended up bouncing into the home plate umpire. It would have been even further away. But instead, That's not enough, Preston. Do your job. one run comes in. Kevin Fagan comes in, gives Lucy Beckham the lead. A casual and courtesy dusting of the plate leads to nothing more than more dirt on it. And now Preston DiNapoli steps back in with Hank Epley at third and Kingston Kolb at second. First base wide open for him. And he almost gets hit by a pitch himself. Does he get hit? He does. They're giving him first. So now it'll be Tommy Burns' opportunity. So Tommy Byrne, sharply hit ball. However, that right center gap not far enough into it. And the center fielder makes the grab. Bengals strand all three, but they have taken the lead. It's five to four, and it'll be Michael Mapes on the mound to defend. We go to the bottom of the seventh, Beckham back on top. Three outs away from a road win here in Cane Bay. Matt, I got to tell you, it is a different experience, not only not having us in control of music and anything, but not having any announcements, not having any baseball. Use the golf voice. Vern Lundquist calling here on 18 as Tiger Woods is 43 shots over par. <laughs> it's not the same. Having the boys in the production truck running things. You know they wouldn't even let them in the complex here tonight. I had to do this all ourselves. Said there was no parking for a truck that big. Said they would have had to have been here at 9 a.m. to run cables. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you, yes, you do. Said the satellite needed a permit from the county. Just no good, no good. So we'll keep it. We'll keep it simple here tonight. Michael Mapes on the mound, man with the plan as he faces the top of the lineup. One, two, three batters, Julian Minus, Ethan Dodson, and Devin Hogue. Dangerous part of the lineup. Michael Mapes will have to come with his best. And the first thing he starts off with is a curveball that curves significantly outside. Mapes comes set, delivers. Nice strike right down the middle. Julian Minus looks at it. Minus... You know, to look at him, you don't see a you don't see a, a good typical baseball player in him. You know, he's small framed, doesn't present as he's gonna be a whole lot, but man, he has been a force both at the plate and in the field as the shortstop for these Cane Bay Cobras. A very impressive young ball player. Kind of one of those sleeper agents. Mapes with a 2-1 count, gets Minus to tap one foul, and now the count comes even. Yeah, Tuesday must, must have been nothing but cages. Mapes on the 2-2 count, Minus waits on it. Here's the pitch. 
And that's a strikeout. One away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Designated hitter Ethan Dodson comes into the box. Left-handed batter facing this righty pitcher. Gun fires over on the track. I think that's the 800-meter run. Maybe the hurdles again. They have been battling athlete cooperation over there, trying to get the athletes to stay out of the infield, stay off the finish line. It's like herding cats over there at that complex. I think we've got the better end of the athletic stick tonight as we watch baseball over here. Mapes trying to work down, misses just high. Now a 2-0 count on Dodson. Those of you who have joined us here late in the game, love having you come in. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Lucy Beckham on top, five to four. Spent the last four innings trailing by a run. However, some lucky turns of events and some very aggressive base running brought Perrin Ketchin and Kevin Fagan across the plate in the top half of this inning and reclaimed the lead for the Lucy Beckham Bengals. Kane Bay trying to do something about it in this bottom half of the frame. There's one away, and Dodson draws the walk. Now here's Devin Hogue. Devin Hogue swings a powerful bat, the first baseman for the Cobras. He could be a go-ahead run. This Lucy Beckham defense, which has been fantastic tonight, trying to keep it from being thus. Anything to the left side has Andrew Hoover written all over it, and Andrew Hoover has been absolutely unbreakable. This one goes towards Hoover, but it's going to be foul. Tapped off the foot of Hogue. One on, one out. Five to four is your score. Dodson reached on the walk. Now Hogue fouls another one back, and it's an 0-2 count. Alvarez jumps over and picks that one up. He's in the on-deck circle. Whole bunch of chatter coming out of that left side dugout. Another foul, this one into the glove of Hank Epley, and the count stays unchanged. A couple of baseballs back in the bag for the home plate umpire, and we'll do the 0-2 again. Dodson gets a modest lead over at first base. Good! And it's strike three. Epley. Epley chases it down. Since first base was occupied, Hogue is out. And now it'll be Alvarez's shot. Dodson at second base. He's going to do whatever he can to get in. At least to tie it up and try to take this into extra innings. Alvarez trying to help him do that. And nine boys in gray working against that plan. Mapes sends a pitch inside. 1-0. And he's going to ask for a fresh baseball. I have to compliment this young lady who's sitting behind us. Grading papers, dedication to her art, to her teaching science. Missing this fine baseball game. Ma'am, you are a tribute to teachers everywhere. <laughs> 2-0 count now on another inside pitch. Hank Epley scrambles to keep that one in front of him. Dodson stays out at second. Alvarez back into the box. The Cobra's right fielder, who's spoiled a couple of plays for the Bengals, he'll take strike one. Yeah. 
Michael Mapes on the mound. It looks like Michael has grown two inches since the last time he pitched a game. Now he's got ball three. And again, Epley blocks it up. Three one. Two away, runner on second. And strike number two comes in. That's a beautiful pitch from Mapes. Count comes full. This is where it counts, right here. Bottom of the seventh, down by a run. Tying run over at second base. Squeeze it, go one, Hank. Full count. Two in the mud. Michael Mapes walks him. Now here's Connor Hirsch. Hirsch trying to not only win this for the team, but win this for himself. He's the pitcher of record right now. Came in and adopted a lead, pitched a couple of innings, and now he's responsible for those fourth and fifth runs. Andrew Hoover tries for the swipe tag, doesn't get it, then goes to first base. Runners called safe at first, and now the Cobras have the bases loaded. What a funky play. Now here's C.J. Myers. Bases loaded, two outs. Bottom of the seventh. Cobras trailing by a run. Bengals on top, five to four. High school baseball on a Wednesday night does not get more intense than this. Michael Mapes on the mound comes set, leg kick delivery, and it's a swing and a miss. Everybody thought about it. Hank Epley does a fine job. Mapes crashes in to cover the plate, and everybody heads back to their base. A lot of action for one strike. Even the parents back here behind the backstop getting a little bit excited. <laughs> Myers back in. He takes strike number two looking. 0-2 oh, count. Mapes. On the mound, not even looking at the batter, excuse me, not even looking at the runners. He comes set now. Here's the kick, here's the delivery. This ball is in the air. This is gonna touch the ground. There's one run in, that's the score, that's the tying run. The Cobras win it. A walk-off hit from C.J. Myers wins it. Into the left center gap. And they break their losing streak and also break the win streak of the Bengals. Final score. Six to five after what was a very peculiar play in the at-bat before that. The Bengals fall. A hard fought ball game. And that is what disappointment looks right, like right there. The boys in gray, not happy about that. Kevin Fagan came charging in hard. The throw to the plate was well high and long, just doing everything he could trying to get that ball in here. So six to five is your final baseball score. Michael Mapes will end up with the loss. Connor Hirsch takes the win. And the other Bengals pitchers, Preston DiNapoli, Levi Schrock, no decision. Also, no decision tonight for the starting pitcher, Lucas Porcelli, for the Cane Bay Cobras. 
And we'll take a look at the box score in just a second as soon as we get a chance to see everything update. There we go. Lucy Beckham, five runs on six hits and one error. Kane Bay, six runs on eight hits and two errors. Lucy Beckham plays next on Monday. We'll be at the Beck on Monday at 6.30 p.m. for a region game against Hilton Head. Then it'll be three in a row Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week going to Hilton Head. 6.30 game down there on Wednesday, then a 6.30 game the next night down in May River. Might even just get a hotel down that way and stay for the night. And then Friday night, 6 o'clock, over at Wando High School. That's a bragging rights game. Kane Bay Cobras relieved with bragging rights tonight. A nice ball game, but just not what it needed to be. Like I said, that second to last at bat seemed like a great place to wrap things up, but it just didn't pan out that way. Instead, a hard hit ball to left center is the death knell for the Bengals this evening. Stands have already emptied out. It is 9.15. We're going to call it a night. Hopefully you can join us at the Beck on Monday. If not, we'll bring you a baseball game on YouTube as always. We'll also be on the road Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Love to have you there, especially for that Wando baseball game right there in Mount Pleasant. Need you there. Need you cheering. But for now, 6-5 to five is your final score as the Bengals fall to the Cane Bay Cobras. On behalf of Coach B.J. McConnell, Athletic Director Frank Torcasio, Principal Anna Dassing, all of the coaches and players of the Lucy Beckham Varsity Baseball Squad, I'm James Byrne telling you thanks for coming out to the ballpark. Drive home safely. Have a great night, folks. <laughs>